Hi, my name is Ron Bachman, and this is a new radio program. If you found this on YouTube or iTunes or some other source that produces this um, video, um, we're glad to have you. I think you're going to find it exciting. There's a lot of things we can learn about healthcare. Healthcare Insights is the name of the program. The tagline is Creating the Possible. We're going to talk in these series of presentations about what could be, what should be, what might be. We're going to talk to experts. We're going to talk about new ideas. Could be helpful to consultants who are trying to offer products to their customers. Could be helpful to government uh, elected officials who want to provide more affordable health care to the citizenry. Could be helpful to individuals who are saying, why can't I find better health care, better health insurance? Why can't I find something that's affordable? Well, we're going to make a lot of inroads over the next few weeks in the various ways that health insurance should be developed, should be presented, and should be available to the general public. My name is Ron Bachman. I'm a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and a member of the American Academy of Actuaries. So I do tend to approach things from the technical side, but I'll try not to be a boring actuary. I'll try to present some information that's usable, tangible, practical solutions, and I'll try to do it in a fun way as well. I'm a retired partner from PricewaterhouseCoopers. I have three missions in life. One is to solve the uninsured problem with free market solutions. So Obamacare never did cut it for me. I want to find a way to create a private free market that works for everybody, that covers pre-existing conditions, provides guaranteed issue. If you want health insurance, you'll get health insurance. Because without a good health insurance policy, it's very difficult to access good health care. So the opening round of how we get good health care is try to figure out what in the world can we do to small businesses and the individuals who want to get health insurance at an affordable rate that gives them access, that opens the doors to good health care. Health care reform would require a whole lot more. Different ideas, tort reform, transparency, pricing changes, new alternatives to getting care, centers of excellence, elimination of coordination of benefits, changing the way we do emergency rooms, how we allow people access without health insurance to get into the healthcare system as free riders. All those are good points. And anybody who's had any kind of dealing with the healthcare system can find that thread of a problem that they saw as they engaged in the healthcare system and begin to pull on that thread and say, this is what needs to get changed. This is what needs to get changed. And I agree with all of that. But what I wanna start with this new program, Healthcare Insights, Creating the Possible, is to start with health insurance reform. Because actually most of Obamacare was about health insurance reform. So I wanna solve the uninsured problem, which are mainly small groups and individuals with how to get health care and how the system should be created, a level playing field between individuals and small groups and insurance companies who have all the power to accept or deny coverage, to price differently, to rate differently. Yes, some states have some controls, some limitations, but basically the laws, the rules, the regulations were written by insurance company lawyers and lobbyists. They were not for the benefit of individu individuals. So that's my first mission. And we're gonna to try to tackle that early on with these broadcasts. The second mission is to expand mental health benefits. I've been involved in the mental health area for a long time, trying to get states to pass laws and ultimately the federal government to pass laws that says insurance claims for mental health services ought to be treated the same as physical health services. You cannot solve many physical problems unless you deal with underlying depression, stress, and other mental health conditions. For far too long, we've kind of pushed aside mental health issues, and we're seeing that in a lot of different aspects of our economy and society. 
we need to better deal with mental health issues, both the extreme cases of mental health and the daily issues that we all face and suffer from, which may be more likely depression, stress, anxiety, those things that are affect our attitudes, our ability to deal with other people, our ability to deal with family members, coworkers. So mental health is very important. There are really four aspects of human existence, mental, physical, social, spiritual, and we'll try to deal with all of those. But this second mission of mine is to recognize the importance of mental health services and expand those services, make them more accessible, make them more available to people without stigma. Mental health is the one illness that you tend to push away the caregivers, you push away family members, any other medical condition, you would gather in all the experts, you'd want all the opinions, you want all the support. But mental health is a little different in that you tend to push away all those people who can help you. The third mission that I have is what I call healthcare consumerism. That is getting people more engaged in their health and healthcare decision-making, giving them the tools, the resources, having benefits that reward and incentivize them for taking the proper actions to following their doctor's orders, to taking their medication, following treatment plans, getting people more educated and having benefits that actually allow them what I call shared risk rewards. If they're doing the right things, then the insurance company, the risk bearing entity, whether it's the state, the federal government, the employer, or the insurance company, will share some of that savings back because the consumer, the patient is doing the right things. So those are my three missions. Solving the uninsured problem with free market solutions, expanding mental health benefits, and promoting healthcare consumerism. So this webcast is gonna focus in those three areas in particular. And we're gonna bring in experts. We're gonna talk about a lot of things that would be hopefully new to many of the listeners, expand your knowledge, expand your horizons, expand your insight into what could and should be available. So let's just dive into it. What are we going to talk about in healthcare insights? Well, let's get a call to action. Let's state the reason why we need to do something serious, significant, and impactful to create a private market for health insurance to help those small group, under 50 employee lives typically, and individuals who are out there, whether they're entrepreneurs running their own business, or that their employer doesn't have any health insurance and they want to go out and buy an individual policy. Well, my call to action is a recognition that we have a very divided country around a lot of issues, especially health insurance. We have one party in the United States that's talking about government takeover, Medicare for all, single payer system, things that give the federal government in particular more control over your healthcare decisions, your healthcare coverage, the healthcare reimbursements to the doctors and hospitals that you want to go to. So to a large degree, this presentation is a call to action to those who want free market solutions. I believe the Democrats captured the House of Representatives in 2018 because the voters believed that they would preserve coverage of pre-existing conditions as provided in the Affordable Care Act, the ACA or Obamacare as it's sometimes called. Voters did not and still do not trust Republicans on health care. An April 2019 poll by the Associated Press found that in regards to whom they trust to handle their health care, voters favored Democrats 40% to 23%. That's a 17 percentage point advantage over Republicans. So clearly Americans are giving Democrats a clear edge on health care as the 2020 presidential gear race gears up. The losses in 2018 showed that Republicans cannot wait until after the elections of 2020 to announce a plan to replace Obamacare. If Republicans do not develop and articulate a simple private market alternative to Democrat health proposals, 
they will again face the wrath of the electorate in 2020 and beyond. In a May 2019 Wall Street Journal op-ed, Karl Rove, a nationally recognized Republican strategist stated, it's the paradox of success with 3.6% unemployment and 3.2% growth in gross domestic product, voters are turning to other issues. Clearly, voters, once they're satisfied with the economy, start saying, well, what's the problem? Who can fix the next problem now that this one is fixed? They assume that the next party taking over, the next group of politicians, will continue the success of what has already been solved, and they'll solve the new problems. But we know in reality that that doesn't happen. Many times the first problem that was solved gets reversed as many people try to solve other problems. The May 2019 NBC Wall Street Journal survey asked voters, what should be the top priority for the federal government? 24% chose health care and 18% said immigration and border security. Job creation and growth came in third at 14%. Again, many people recognize that those issues have sort of been solved with the changes in the administration and the focus on business, lower regulations, tax reform, all those things have been working to improve the economy. Again, Carl Rose stated, while this shouldn't stop Republicans from selling their economic success, it points to healthcare as a central challenge for 2020. The information I want to talk about focuses on the most critical and obvious need directly impacting the voting public and the control of Congress, affordable private health insurance. I have two main purposes in these presentations we're going to be talking about with Healthcare Insights. One is this call to action for health insurance reform among elected Republicans, Republican candidates, and Republican leaning voters. I reach out to Democrats who are not in favor of a big government takeover. The whole purpose of these presentations is how do you create a private health insurance system? And that applies across party lines. Unfortunately, today, in today's world, that doesn't seem to be a strong possibility. Everybody has gotten into their own corners. So my belief in the need for free market solutions kind of rests in one party, Republican Party. And I hope they will take the lead and try to reach across the aisle and bring in moderate Democrats that want more private market solutions instead of government takeovers. While no official Republican federal legislation has yet taken form, the ideas I wanna present are more realistic and tangible than the broad statements that are made by some politicians regarding Medicare for all or a single payer system. So let's take a break and we'll come back in the next segment and talk about some of the details and the structure of how a private free market system can be established, how new laws and regulations can take effect to really help the consumers out there get what they want and what they need. Thank you. 